Johnson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukenus certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. Hello again everyone and welcome. If the sound of the glockenspiel has not already told you, we're in Switzerland. This time for round 11 and what a beautiful place this is. Rogamug has hosted motocross for many years, so the locals are used to it. They'll be on their way to the track later on after lunch, of course. I'd love to show you around a bit more, but there's work to do. After the longest break this season, World Cyclocross Championship returned for the final four GPs starting with beautiful Roggenburg, Switzerland. This weekend we had 39 teams present and quality day action meant great battles on the race day. Sunday we had really beautiful weather and teams lined up to fight hard for the remaining points. Did we get closer to crown our champion and were there any surprises this weekend? Please stay tuned and find out, but let's start with a recap first. It was boiling hot for round 10 in Stelpa Latvia and in this country of fanatical fans we had a ball. With 20 jumps each lap, who jumped for joy most? Well, young Belgian Arne Dierkins with passenger Robbie Bax lifted their first overall win. It was amazing that I think everything fell in the right place. We took the, the momentum with us, the second heat, and we finished second to, to win the overall, so it was good. And I was really happy uh, I could give it back to the team for all the, uh, their efforts they, uh, they did the whole uh, year. Yeah. Marvin Van Luken and Ben van den Bogart were not so lucky. Yeah, the first uh, race we, we struggled with some, uh, some green fence in the front wheel. And the second race, uh, after uh, some laps, I had uh, yeah, some problems with my back and then, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't possible to to fight for, uh, for the podium or fight for the win. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis climbed the podium too, but Dierkins was on top. <music> 61 points the lead, Bax has over Van Luken. Dierkins and Herman's dead level, Stuart Brown fighting hard there. And his son Jake leads the next table, he's in 11th place. This is a spectacular place here in Switzerland. This circuit has been used for many, many years. Round 11, here we are then, right on the French border in Roggeberg. It's spectacular. The track is something else. Somewhere down there is Steve Randall with Kasper Stupelis. Let's take a look. So, welcome to Roggenberg. Welcome to the track walk. This circuit here is a hard pack circuit and as you can see behind us there are many elevations. I'm joined here by Kasper Stuplis. Thank you Kasper for joining us. Now these hills behind us, big G outs on the downhills are very important for the passengers to get that right. Yeah, for the passenger and also for the rider, you know, they need to keep it tight on the handlebar and, uh, and for the passengers it's really tough on the legs. So you need to be really tight in your body to, to go through that G-force. It's like no other track in the World Championship calendar. It's a fantastic circuit here. We'll now move on to the next part and show you some more. So we've got to the next part of the track. It's the second corner. Now on this track there are many adverse cambers. And I know myself, Caspers, adverse cambers, passengers are very difficult. Yourself, how do you prepare to get yourself through these sections? Yeah, it, you need to hang uh, double as deep as normal and, uh, and it's difficult to, to adjust the, the grip and to be as quick as possible to the next section. So it's a uh, yeah, really tough moment uh, on the racetracks and uh, like you said, it's a lot of, on this track, uh, right and left ones like this, so it's tough. So this part of the track, as we say, is very important. These passengers have to work really hard to get this bike to stay level so they can get the drive out of the corners. We'll go to the next part and show you some more. This part of the circuit then, it's only about a quarter of a, quarter of a, a lap into the uh, full lap. We come to this double. Now this double step up is fairly complicated. If you don't get it wrong, it will bite you. 
Is it that difficult? Yeah, for sure. If someone is, uh, is not jumping or if you are not adjusting right the jump, it is really, I would say it's one of the biggest uh, doubles that we ever jump. Uh, and yeah, this track is again, again uh, special way with this one. You know, when you come to this GP, it's the first thing that comes in my mind, this, uh, this double jump. It's very spectacular. As I say, there's only maybe four or five jumps on this track altogether, but you need to get out of the gate ride hard and ride safe. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey took another hard knock in Stelper, aggravating Brett's back injury, but they're here and they're looking good. I'm feeling good. It's just uh, got a little bit of pain in the ribs from Latvia crash and a little bit still from the collarbone. But the, the speed's um, definitely there today. I think it's more even. Yeah, it's definitely not better for the left, but it's a bit more even than, than other tracks, yeah. There was a real party atmosphere here when Group A qualifying got underway and it was an absolute flyer for the young British crew, Jake Brown and Joe Millard. They flew into the lead. This track seemed to suit the left-handed chairs and later on into the race we had an absolute convoy of left-handed sidecars. The Koosh cousins, back together, were in the thick of it. But it was Jake Brown, Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey, then Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupolis, then there was Stuart Brown. Kern Hermans having a really, really good look round the outside, doing everything he could possibly do. Jake Brown, though, showing a clean pair of heels to the rest of the pack. It was a brilliant performance by Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey. The British crews absolutely loving it here. Stuart Brown, of course, so used to this Roggenberg track, and uh, this is more suited to the going for the British crews. These big, fast downhill jumps, the sweeping turns, it didn't cut out too badly. The weather was beautiful, the crowd was enthusiastic. This was going to be a Grand Prix to remember. Still Brown held on. Still Wilkinson held on. Bax and Stupilis in third, apparently unable to do anything about these charging boys. Gary Moulds from Northern Ireland was going well. He had Brian Anthony, the young Australian, out for the first time together. Daniel Willemsen had Andres Haller on board as well. Still Brown and Wilkinson neck and neck, still Bax in third. Stuart Brown at this point was closing, but Bax was through on the inside and up to second place, relegating Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey. But what a brave fight it was by Wilkinson. Apparently none the worse, not just from his back injury, but from the big Stelper crash as well, which gave him a bump on the head too. Bax and Stupolis, with that 61-point championship lead, needed a good start place tomorrow. And moving ahead of Jake Brown and Joe Millard, they guaranteed themselves pick of the gate for the two Grand Prix races. There was a massive crowd here because Roggenberg has hosted so many famous solo and sidecar motocross Grand Prix, I have to say. Willemsen and Andres Haller, the young German passenger who sadly, of course, can no longer compete with Valentin Giro, were doing a great job settling in together. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain flexing their muscles move past Jake and Joe to get right on the back wheel of Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey. And it would only be a matter of time before Stuart Brown claimed the place. Coming hard, though, was Hermans, Kuhn Hermans, Trying that outside line again here, Nicola Mousset looking every which way to go through on the inside. They were very, very fast on this Roggenberg track. Third in the standings and looking likely to lose that place to Arno Dierkins and Robbie Back. So Kuhn Hermans and Nicola Mousset knew they had to get a good qualifying and a good start line place here tomorrow. So important on this Roggenberg track to get out of the gate quickly. Passing is difficult, everybody moving at very, very similar speeds. You have to be brave, have the courage of your conviction, and maybe gun it past 
on a downhill jump and then throw it in front into one of the tight turns. Just as Hermans is displaying, taking the wide way round, now Wilkinson lost out there because he slewed the back wheel round, momentarily almost stopped, and that allowed Hermans and Mousset to claim the place and move in then on the back of the crew in front. Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey, still a creditable ride. Jake Brown and Joe Millard holding station, actually, still ahead of the chasing pack. But it was bad news for Willemson and Haller. Their qualifying was over, so they were destined to fight for their place in last chance. Looked like a machine breakdown. Bax and Stupid is so victorious, guaranteeing themselves pick of the gate tomorrow. And what a good ride by Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain. Similarly, a great fight by Hermans, bringing it home in third, ahead of a spirited attack by Brett Wilkinson. Confirm then, Bax, Tubulis, Brown, Chamberlain, Hermans, Mousset, Wilkinson, fourth, Brown, the Koosh boys, George King, Lewis Gray, brilliant. But certainly, Hermans and Mousset looked very fast. Um, I think after 10 minutes, I feel something in a glitch and uh, every lap it was uh, more bad. And uh, I think the last 10 minutes uh, I didn't have uh, the glitch, so it was not uh, easy to ride. Uh, so we uh, finished on the third place. Uh, I think we could finish on the second place. It's not easy to pass on the track. You see uh, the left uh, sidecar was all in the front. So uh, yeah, they, they will have a good chance this weekend. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will see for tomorrow. And what about the performance by the British crews? We, we roughly know where we want to start from the inside to give us a little bit of cover on the, on the first corner, which then if we don't get the first corner, we have a little bit of room on the second corner. Um, and obviously the, the, start, the finish position tomorrow is as high as possible and if we can get on the podium, it'd be a bonus. But if not, we'll just try and get some points. That performance by Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis will certainly have given Marvin Van Luken and Ben van den Bokart food for thought because they know they have to score well in qualifying if they stand any chance of catching Bax. Yeah, everything uh, looks perfect for the moment. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward for uh, the qualifying race. Uh, our uh, feeling is uh, a lot better last week. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward. It was good to see the big man, Gert van Verven, back here and Peter Bunk, and he's recovered from an injured, broken ankle, in fact, so good to see him back on the line. After injury, uh, two weeks ago we had the first bike time, and uh, it was immediately it was OK. And uh, now it's back on the GP tracks. It's uh, been for everyone a holiday, but for us a little bit longer. But it's feeling OK, and track here is nice, weather is OK, and uh, feeling good. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with the speed today. Uh, just need to work on my time again to, to, to set up the time practice, but uh, it was okay. And now uh, I hope uh, to finish also in top five for the quali race. Group B qualifying with the whole shot, Kings, Jerkins and Bax do it again. Well, they had a bit of a problem, not as much of a problem as a couple of the crews who got tangled on the start. There were some massive crashes and a huge, huge shunt taking out a lot of the crews further down the order. But there was a strong Swiss contingent here and Heinzer and Betchart doing a great job up front, challenging for the lead with Arne Jerkins and Robbie Bax. Marvin Van Luken and Ben van den Bogart didn't have the best of starts, but within two laps they were charging through and were right on the back of the leading quartet, very swiftly up to fifth place. Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk started well, the number 14 crew. Julian Veldman and Glenn Janssens. The number five crew were locked in a battle with Van Luken, trying to keep him at bay. Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk doing a great job in front of them. Velman and Janssens were to finish strongly, get themselves a top six place in actual fact, so that would bode well for the start gate tomorrow. The weather conditions here in qualifying, very warm, 27 degrees and a cloudless sky as you can see. The scenic beauty of this Roggenberg track, absolutely breathtaking. 
Jerkins and Bax were eventually to fall victim to Van Lukener, who was to take victory in this one. Heinzrum, bet sharp though, the local boys putting on a terrific, terrific fight. Kurt Verrick, Loris Diders, Arna Jerkins trying to hold these guys at bay, and there Varric and Diders coming through, there Van Lukener still struggling to make up ground, but as the qualifying race went on, he was to chip away and make his presence felt. Kalenchik Heyhal, the Czechs were in there as well. This was really, really busy. And Gary Moulds and Brian Anthony, the Ulster and Australian pairing, fighting their way up, were to finish 12th at the end and get the final automatic qualification place. A good result for them, a newly paired team. Not easy, you know, when you just jump in a ride with uh, a, not a strange passenger as such, in inverted commas, a different passenger. Varric and Iders, Van Verven slipping down, Veldman and Janssens still fighting hard there. They were eventually to make their way past Gert Van Verven and Peter Bunk. A momentary lapse there for Kurt Varric and that allowed Marvin van Lukener to take one more place as he marched his way up the table. Next on his hit list was Marco Heinzer and Rudy Betschart. The left-handed chair cutting across the front of van Lukener there and you can see just how the contrasting styles of the left and rights work. Hannah Jerkins, Robbie Baxo out in front at this point in the proceedings but would they be able to withstand the Marvin van Lukener challenge, as you heard in the interview, feeling much, much better this weekend. No issues with Ben van der Bogart's back. This is a different sort of going through on the inside of Heinze. And then the next man on his target list, race leader, Anna Dierkins and Robbie Bax. Race leaders, should I say. This very much a team sport. Sliding it in, we've seen that style before where the left hand chairs throw it into that right hand and lock up the back wheel momentarily. Mines are then slipping backwards almost into the clutches of Kurt Varick and Loris Diders. But Varick unable to close them down into the final stages of this qualifying race. At the front though, it was game on. The reigning champions, Marvin van Luke and Ben van der Bogart, made no mistakes in this one. Once past Jerkins and Bax, they were away and opened up a handsome lead to bring it home to victory in Group B qualifying. Jerkins and Bax, as it transpired, were to be even more unlucky come the Grand Prix races tomorrow, but you will see that in part two of the show. It all fell apart for them in Switzerland, but not so for Van Lukener. He and Ben van den Bogart taking qualifying Group B by storm, staying very much in touch with Etienne Bax. Jerkins and Robbie Bax brought it home second from Heinze and Betchart. What a ride that pairing had ahead of Kurt Varick on Loris Diders. Hard-fought victory then for Van Luken and Van der Bergart. They made it look easy though in the end. Dierkins, Heinzer, Varick, Veldman, Van Verven, Kalenchik, Santamans, Hrock Boys, Koiben, Hoffman and Gary Moulds, Brian Anthony. Brilliant. Uh, take second in the start and then in the second corner we could move to the first place and I guess we had that for four laps and with a four second lead or something but then we stole the bike in a, in a turn so uh, Marvin could pass us and uh, after that I think the whole race it was about three or five seconds between him and us so the speed was almost the same so that was good but uh, we couldn't uh, come back again uh, to his rear wheel so uh, I hope for tomorrow uh, a, good a good start again and then uh, making no mistake, mistakes. Last chance and the battle for the final six places on the grid and there were two big names in this one, Zeno Compilati and Daniel Willemsen. 
Yeah, we had in, uh, in the race, uh, we had an engine failure and uh, we got stuck uh, completely down at the track. It was impossible to push it back, so we, were, we pulled up back with the tractor and uh, we had to drive the last chance. But as we've said before, it happens to the best of them. Well, that's difficult for sure, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy that I drive this GP with Anders Haller. And uh, he's a great passenger, he surprised me really, really much. Uh, and I'm happy to ride again. Uh, on the bike I feel comfortable, but uh, I did not drive so, so much the last few weeks. And uh, it's a little bit tough, a little bit not, not so easy when you're, when you're out a little, uh, for some races. But, um, Feels good, comfortable, and uh, looking forward for tomorrow. But it's uh, it's hard to start from the second row. Uh, it's fast here, but uh, I like the track, and uh, so we will not uh, fight for the first three places. But uh, we will do our best job. With 39 crews entered here, nine of them were fighting in last chance to get those coveted top six places. And someone, yes, three of them in actual fact, would be disappointed. The disappointment, palpable. The delight, you can see it. And they're the top six. Austria has long had a tradition in sidecar motocross and the pick of today's crop, Benjamin Weiss and Patrick Schneider. Take a look at this. Yeah, the season of last year was really perfect and the preparing in the winter also. And when I'm not uh, on the bike, then I I'm on the ice, I play ice hockey and in one of the last playoff games I got a hit and broke my wrist, a little bit complicated and then the time gone and gone and I have a lot of terms uh, at the doctors and the first operation went not so well and six months later, that was uh, now two weeks ago, uh, a second operation I had to do and this went well and from there I made some good steps in physiotherapy and some degrees more in the wrist move and so I hope it can go on like this. Well, race day dawn, hot and sunny, just as qualifying had been and this the part the Swiss crowd absolutely love. This is a popular, popular sport in this part of the world. Four world champions winning 12 titles between them came from Switzerland in the last four decades and before that there were even greater champions. So it's a sport much loved by the Swiss, the opportunity they get to meet their heroes in actual fact. There's no bigger hero than Etienne Bax. He had come here to Roggenberg knowing what he has to do, maintain that big series lead and to do that everything has got to be just right. The track at the moment is, is, is very good, I think, and in compared to other years, it's a little bit more wet, they water a little bit more, but uh, it's been very dry here lately, so uh, I think it's okay. And uh, yeah, This morning was a little bit slippery, but uh, yeah, today will be a warm day, so it will dry out very fast, and I think uh, it will be some spectacular racing today. My expectation for the weekend, I think... Uh, yeah, we just need to score good points and uh, you know we have not not a lot of pressure on us because uh, we have we have some points in, uh, in advantage but still you know we want to we want to do good and we want to win races so that's the goal for today as well okay start is very important but this is this is a track where you can overtake so uh, the, the best is to to take a whole shot because then you have no stones and uh, and no pain but it is it is possible to overtake so uh, uh, yeah, it will be an exciting day and, uh, and hopefully we can do some, uh, some good job today. Well, there might not be pressure on Etienne Bax, but the pressure is all on Marvin van Lukener. The defending champion can't help but thinking this title might just be slipping away from him. The track was very good uh, prepared, so uh, for the race it will be okay. And uh, I think uh, yeah, maybe so for uh, the races it will be dusty, so yeah, that's good.
Yeah, our feeling is uh, very good. Uh, the first thing that we won is a good start. That's yeah, that's very important. But uh, last times for us is uh, difficult for that. So we we want to try this, and uh, yeah, then I I'm sure that we can fight for the podium or some yeah, or maybe for the win. So yeah, I hope it. It could not be closer in the standings between Arne Jerkins and Robbie Bax and Kern Hermans and his French passenger Nicolas Musset. That's why. That's why there's so much attention to detail in their camp. It's yesterday at the end of the race, a uh, problem with the, the engine clutch. So we have a uh, finish uh, easier and uh, finish third. And this morning, yes, uh, the track was a little bit slippery, but we have found a good line to, to make a good, uh, good lap. And uh, yes, uh, surprise, we are first and uh, HN was uh, second. But close but uh, yeah it will be good for the for the two races uh, this afternoon we need to stay in the podium we have to stay in the podium but of course we want also uh, uh, win the races and uh, yeah uh, stay uh, three or maybe two it's possible yeah Arno it's we know Arno it's also a fast guy now it's growing up and uh, we have to to stay uh, positive and focus of the of the race and uh, yeah I think it will be good well, this is how they line up then from qualifying the 30 that go through. So Bax van Lukena, the Browns are in there. Dierkins, he's right on the front row along with Hermans. Heinz a bet shot. How well are they going? Varick is there. Veldman, the Koosh boys. George Kings, Lewis Gray, brilliant. The Czech, Pudlo Vitong. Then we go Van Verben, Kalenchik, Santamans, Hrok. Those are the top 24 going through and of course there is another page with 10 on including the six from last chance Compilati and Willemsen make it through as indeed did Moulds and Anthony they were 12th in their group amazing stuff well done boys Race one ahead of us in the sunshine here in Roggenberg and there was an awful lot for these guys to think about. So much at stake. Robbie Bax and Kasper Stupilis sharing a joke there. Final adjustments to the bikes. Marvin Van Lukener looking like he's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain know they go well here with their left-handed sidecar. The track does seem to suit these boys. Heinzer and Betchart, how quick are they in front of their patriotic partisan fans? And Brett Wilkinson, what a fighter he has been this year. Likewise, Jake Brown. Gate dropped, a race one got underway then, away up this steep hill, flicking to the first turn, which is the right-hander. It was a bit of a battle between Velman Janssens and the whole shot kids, Arna Jerkins and Robbie Bax, and it was the number 10 who got the advantage. The pack sorting themselves out, a bit of a traffic jam further down the order. The left-handed chairs featuring well. You can see the red shirts of the Brown family jumping high. Jerkins and Robbie Bax leading. Then it was the number five of Julian Veldman and Glenn Janssens. Hermans was in there. And these guys then sorting themselves out, Kern Hermans. Then it was Stuart Brown. Jake Brown was in there too. Very difficult to pick out the numbers. It was so fast and furious, but a terrific, terrific start by Arna Jerkins and Robbie Bax. But sadly, it was all come to nothing because they were due to retire having not completed lap one. And I'll tell you a bit more about that when we get to the situation that caused their exit, not just from the race, but from the proceedings. They picked up a stone in the front disc, buckled the wheel, they crashed quite heavily and were forced to seek medical attention. Meanwhile, Brown alongside Hermans, the battle still raging at the front with a good, good showing by Julian Velman and Glenn Janssen. Hermans, a master of those tight lines. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis on the back of the number five crew, Julian Veldman, but not for long. They would tuck inside here and drive down the hill. Hermans pulled the same trick on Brown with Jake Brown behind. Marvin Van Lukener was absolutely flying ahead of Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis. The Browns went through. Kurt Varick 
glancing over the shoulder to see Heinzer and Betchart fighting. Brett Wilkinson, number eight, he and Ryan Humphrey. And here we see Anna Jerkins. Robbie Bax is out of sight because they had a crash as a result of that bent front wheel and they needed medical attention. It kept them out of the rest of the meeting. So Kern Hermans, unaware of it at this moment in time, uh, was pretty safe in that third place in the standings, for now at least. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis trying everything they knew, taking every leaf out of the book to find a way past the defending champions, but equally, Marvin van Lukener and Ben van den Bogart knew what they had to do, but they failed. Through went Bax and Stupelis. So, so dominant, having won so many races this year, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis. When you compare that to the season before, well, what a difference a year makes. Velman and Glenn Janssens, having something of an incident of their own, were forced to somehow try and make it through, and they got some of the fencing caught up in their rear wheel. And that is always the problem with that green netting. You rarely get over it and get away with it. So Velman and Janssens down the order, Dierkins and Robbie Bax out of it. The Browns looking good. Varick and Diders also out of it with a mechanical problem. So this was shaking down really quickly here. Bax and Stupilis though out in front. Hermans Musse still battling hard with Brown. In fact, up with Van Lukener at this point in time. Van Lukener was to repay the compliment. Doesn't give up easily, the young Belgian. Not for nothing does he carry the number one plate. Just be mindful of these young riders from the Low Countries who cut their teeth on sidecar motocross outfits from a very, very tender age. And that is something we do not enjoy in Great Britain. You rarely, well, there is no series for young sidecar crossers under the age of a driving license. But in Belgium and Holland, they do have a, a school, they have a program to encourage the development of these kids. And you can see just how quickly they go and how good that is. Stuart Brown, another one to throw the back round on that tight right-hander. And I notice Etienne Bax doing it, albeit with a chair on the other side. Stuart Brown slip-sliding his way round the tight turns, pointing and squirting the Husky. I think it's a technical turn, this uh, big thumping four-stroke, which he has really, really got to grips with. Jake Brown and Joe Millard. This young pairing, together for the first time this year, have gelled, and since he's taken to living and training in Holland, Jake Brown is now threatening the dominance of his father in a sport that uh, Brown Senior has dominated, not just in the UK, twice third in the world. And here is another bright star of the future, Brett Wilkinson and Ryan Humphrey of the future, already a star and a tough, tough cookie to boot. Heinzer battling hard here. Marco Heinzer with the Kusch cousins. Christoph and Maxine Kusch. Both their fathers raced in Cycle Cross and are now in the paddock helping them. Kolenchik, number 38. Oh, out of the running went Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk. As out in front, in an unassailable lead. At this point, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis came here with a significant lead and they've extended it. Job done for them in race one. It does not get much better than that. Second place then for Marvin and Ben. Uh, Hermans chasing them home in third and a brilliant fourth for Brown Chamberlain. And confirmation then of that result. I'm tempted to say Bax stupendous. How good was that? Van Lukener, Hermans, 
Brown Chamberlain and Brown Millard, father and son there. Brett Wilkinson, Ryan Humphrey, three British crews. Heinz of Betshot, the local fans loved it. Already entering the weekend, we, we felt pretty good. And uh, already from the first uh, free practice, we set uh, the fastest lap time. So we are pretty fast in this track. Uh, and that gives uh, a lot of confidence. And uh, and also, even if you don't have the greatest start, you know that we can uh, you can come through and, and, and get on the lead. And this is what we did. A couple of mistakes, a couple of good battles. Uh, but yeah, we managed to win the race with, with, uh, with a decent gap. Yeah, we are happy with the uh, second place. I think uh, yeah, it was the uh, most possible for us. Uh, the start was not so bad uh, on on third place. We uh, we go back to four, come uh, on the lead, and uh, yeah, we then we lose again uh, two places. But the last uh, two laps, we come uh, back to the second place. So yeah, we are happy with this result. Yeah, we made a, a good start. We started uh, second, and then on the first uh, big double jump, we could pass for the lead and. We were comfortable, comfortable the whole uh, half lap, and then we take the second uh, one uh, below. And when we come at the end, I think uh, a stone came into the front wheel and it blocked, and we go uh, yeah, big crash. Um, and the medical crew checked us already, but uh, we are not allowed to to ride the second heat anymore. So that's uh, a bit of bummer. Yeah, that's a big disappointment for them. But not for these guys, and the rest of the guys focusing on what lies ahead. Can Varric do better in race two? He did not have the best of luck. He certainly will be trying, as they all will. Can Etienne Bax make it a double? Well, you'll find out when race two kicks off shortly. Can Van Lukena turn second place into a win? Can the British crews do it all again? You bet they can. What a weekend it's been for them so far. Everything to play for here. Here we go. Everybody buoyed with the excitement. I say, could the British crews go one better here? Well, look at Jake Brown streaking in from the right-hand side of your screen. He and Joe Millard took the whole shot from Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupolis. This was absolutely a fine performance by the young British rider and his compatriots were all going with him too. Not to be outdone, Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain were looking hard in third, but very, very quickly, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupolis were on the back of young Jake Brown, but he wasn't phased. Come on, it's only a double world champion, so what? Have some of this, have some of my left-hand sidecar. Over the jump, Etienne Bax knows how good these young guys are and he also knows that maybe, just maybe, the left-hand sidecar might work for them here. Not that time. Bax and Stupolis passed Jake Brown and Joe Millard and took the lead. But it was still a fighting performance by the Browns to stay in touch. Kern Hermans, Nicola Moussey, number two, found themselves in a chasing position again behind the multiple British champions. It wasn't going to be easy to pass here. The stone littered circuit. It was a stone that caused the downfall of Arno Dierkins. And you get one of those in your goggles and you will know all about it. Kurt Varick, Loris Diders having a much better ride this time. Etienne Bax though was away with it. Brown's son and father this time, the 28 leading the Triple Eight with Kern Hermans in fourth and fighting and Marvin Van Lukena, Ben van der Bogart in fifth, trying their utmost. Damage limitation for them. They've given away another five points in the previous race. They do not want to repeat that, or if they have to repeat it, they want to keep it to five and no more. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain sense too that uh, with the absence of Arna Jerkins, and they will know that he's not competing in this one, there is ground to be made up in the standings. And in actual fact, at the end of the day, Stuart Brown acquitted himself really, really well. On the inside of Kern Hermans of fighting, but Hermans had the drive there away up the hill. He then was on the back of Jake Brown alongside and passed. Brave over the jumps. These four crews, two left-handed, two right-handed, 
locked together in mortal combat in race two here in Roggenberg. Stuart Brown staying ahead of the defending champions, Marvin Van Luken and Ben van der Bogart, who were actually having something of a resurgent ride here in Roggenberg. They've got their mojo back. They're back on track. Joe Millard, the young Spider-Man, hanging out there, trailing one arm, just hanging on with his right leg and his right arm on the handrail, left boot firmly wedged against the handrail upright. Just watch the style of these passengers. Think about this for 30 minutes plus two laps through your thigh muscles. There's no such thing as sitting. You flop over the back just like that to keep the back down and get the drive. Wilkinson and Humphrey having another good ride. They would actually bring it through to eighth place. They didn't have the best of starts and they were making up ground here like an express train. Good ride being had by Daniel Willemsen and Andres Haller. They were fighting their way and at this point they were 11th with every possibility of moving into the top 10. Willemsen obviously pleased with his new young German partner. It remains to be seen if that partnership persists and uh, continues in to the 2020 season which is already, would you believe, only just round the corner. Kurt Varick and Loris Diders, the next to move alongside Jake Brown and Joe Millard and go past. Justin Coyburn, the number 17, being passed by the race leaders. Checker flag it was then for Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis. Double victory here. Outstanding performance in Roggenberg. Marching on in the championship lead. Second place, number two and two in the race for Herman Zumusse. There it is then, confirmation of that. Bax from Herman's Brown. Best Van Lucan could do this time was fourth. Varick fifth. Jake Brown, 6th, Heinzer, 7th, Wilkinson, 8th, Compilati, Willemsen, Lasagna and Kolenchik, rounding out the top 12. Overall victory, no doubt about that, but third place on the podium. Yeah, we are still happy. Uh, we are again on the podium, so that's not bad, but uh, yeah, for sure you... Uh, you always go for the win, but uh, yeah, like I say, we are happy back on the podium and uh, we are uh, on a good way. We did not so good start and uh, yeah, we had some problems to pass some teams and also uh, with Stuart Brown, we want to pass them and uh, in the beginning we are a little bit fast, but it is not so easy to pass and yeah, uh, yeah, we finished on third. Second place it was for Kern Hermans and Nicolou Mousset. They were beaten by a quicker crew, but by golly, they were fast here. It's looking good for them. Third place now consolidated so far in the standings. Yeah, finally a uh, very good weekend for us. Uh, I feel good. Uh, we're on the podium, second place. So we are still uh, still in the, in the top and uh, yeah, the team is really happy. And uh, about the track, the, oh, the track is really bumpy and uh, the solo bump is not easy with, uh, with Saka and uh, yeah, we have tried to find uh, to find the line, but uh, yeah, second place, and uh, we are really happy. But what an imperious display by Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis, marching on, increasing their lead by a significant number of points. Again, they have, if you ask me, one hand on the title. Yeah, great. You know, to 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 have a double victory is always the best feeling there is after a weekend. We don't, uh, we don't look to the championship, everybody, of many people say to me, take it easy, you know, just count the points, but, uh, you know, it's not, it's not the best thing to do, and we just want to ride, and we just want to be the best, and, uh, yeah, by winning two times, that, 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 that is yeah, such a nice feeling, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great way to end the weekend, and, 
we have, we have now 71 points in front, so we can slowly start watching to the title now, and uh, yeah, that gives a good feeling. Well, there it is. That's that gap. Van Luken and must feel it slipping away. Hermans has extended that advantage over Arne Dierkins. Stuart Brown closing in. Good stuff here. Willemsen, Santamans. These guys all looking good. But six more races, three more rounds. It seems a matter of days and we'll be in Hoik in Belgium where we bring you a live transmission. Join us then from me, Barry Nutley. What a series this has been. Thank you for watching. We love our fans. Take care. See you in Belgium. Bye for now. We never stop, so going when you finish And even when we bleed, still believe that we can win this We got what's underneath, you're all about that image We never even stop at the top, no limits Champions, and we're the champions And we're the champions And we're the champions So bring it on Wellington is ten times the world champion. Facts and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukenen certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.